Hi folks, Buckley here with a really quick practice session on engineering sketching. So we're going to go through three problems or three different objects that um, are simple little toys, right? Kind of kind of popular wooden toys that have um, interesting shape and scale features and function. So that's why they were selected. So when we're doing engineering sketching, remember we're not trying to be artists. We're trying to communicate a design idea. So again, what we're looking for is that the shape of the object is clear and the scale of the object, meaning the size, um, that we're communicating any key features uh, of the design um, or key components and that uh, it's clear how the design functions. So um, let's do one that we uh, we did in class, okay? So this is a review. This is the Jacob's Ladder. Okay, we all remember that from lecture. Now let's look at the sketch here. Okay, so this would be the sketch for the Jacob's Ladder. Um, so uh, let's see how we did. So our first thing is, is scale. Uh, so I've got about two inches wide, each of the blocks is about a half inch thick, and it's about a foot long. That was my estimate based on scaling off of my hand. Um, so it's some general size, right? So it's not the size of a person, and it's not the size of a pencil. It's somewhere in between. Don't worry too much if you're, you know, you don't have, like, those same numbers as I do. It's an estimate. We have six blocks, okay? So that's, that's scale. Um, and uh, we're also looking at shape, right? So it's a, it is a, whoops, it's a length here of individual blocks that are that are linked together, right? So we kind of got an idea for, for what it looks like as well. So pretty good on the shape and scale. Now let's talk about the, um, about the features of it. So we have the individual blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's also called out here. Um, and then we've got these ribbons. So ribbons tying the blocks together. We got these lines. At some point, I couldn't figure out what the over under uh, weaving was. Um, I'm trying to sketch pretty fast. So I tried to sketch this in less than two minutes, but I've got uh, over under weaving of ribbon. So it's, I'm letting you know that there's some ribbon here and it's kind of woven together to make a, to, to, to make an interesting uh, uh, component, right? Um, all right, so did pretty good there on the, on the uh, different features. Now let's talk about the function, and that's where I'm going to the side view. Okay, so I have a flip the first one while holding it vertical, right? So this is conveying that I'm flipping that first block, and I'm going back and forth as the causes cascading action all the way to the bottom. So that's fairly clear as well. So again, we're looking for scale and uh, shape. We're also looking for features and we're looking for function. This was pretty good. You'll notice that it's obvious from my handwriting here and everything that I was moving pretty fast. Imagine that you're trying to sketch something out for somebody on a napkin, right? Here's my idea. A picture's worth a thousand words, right? Um, we're not going for artistic rendition. We're going for those, those three components again. All right, so that was the one from class. Now let's do two new ones together. So what I'd like you to do is um, to Restrain yourself from going ahead to my answer. So I'm going to show you them each in sequence. I'll show you the new object, um, which may be familiar to you or may be completely unfamiliar to you. Um, I'm going to show you it in a video form with me using the object. I'd like you to just stay on that slide. So you can hit pause. You can rewind as many times as you want. Okay, I'll wait for about 30 seconds or so on that image. Um, and then pause the video and try to sketch on your own. And then we'll, we'll look at it together. Here we go. This is called the floppy giraffe toy. All right, so let's see what I did on this one. Okay, floppy giraffe tool. This is a really interesting type of tool. I, I or it's a toy, floppy giraffe toy. Um, it's a really interesting toy. There's there's a whole series of these, and the way that it works is basically there are some, um, oops, some beads. Okay, uh, that are strung together, 
and they're like the legs of the giraffe or some part of the body, but it's, it's all connected together with, with a string that goes through beads. Uh, and then that, that is tensioned via a spring and a platform. So when you're pressing on the bottom, you're actually compressing the spring and you're loosening the tension on this string, which then causes all these beads to collapse. So I'm trying to communicate that idea. Let's see how I did on uh, shape and scale. Shape is okay, right? This leg, I could have done a better job with as quick as I was moving on saying that, okay, I've got legs and the body and the head are all strung together. Um, I was focused more on the spring mechanism and the loosening of the string and everything. But I do have my giraffe toy on top. Um, there's no real good sense of scale here. So I would probably have deducted some points for myself there, maybe give myself a one, excuse me, on shape and scale. On uh, components, I'm doing a pretty good job and same with function, right? So on components, you basically have be beads and spring. You have a platform that has a spring in it. And when you compress the spring, um, the beads are going to are going to go loose and it's going to collapse. And when the platform is not compressed, the spring is taut and the giraffe stays upright. So I would probably give myself, you know, two points on the on the components, uh, on the features, and two points on um, the function. But where I could have done some improvement is on the overall shape um, and also the scale of the object. Reflect on your own drawings in that regard. All right, our third and final toy that I'd like to show you is the catapult. Um, this is a little wooden toy kit catapult. Ooh, volume a little high on that. All right, guys. So what's going on with the catapult? Well, the catapult's interesting because a lot of people spend a huge amount of time um, drawing that frame, and they really don't get to the meat of it, which is how exactly are we propelling that marble, right, or that load in the catapult? So this is a toy catapult, eight, inch, eight inches or so uh, across, four to six high, right, made out of this wooden frame. I've labeled the frame, right? It's got a little bit of a reinforcement and an arm that's, that spins. Um, I'm talking a lot about, you know, where the ball is positioned, so it's in this bucket and it launches. The area that I spent the most time in my less than two minutes of sketching here was how this is being propelled, right? So it basically twists to store elastic energy. These are ropes. Energy is elastic energy from twisted ropes. So the rope twists back and then it wants to unwind to release. That's what's propelling this arm around and launching the, the uh, load or the marble forward. So let's reflect on how I did here. Um, so I was put under the same time crunch as you guys are. Um, so basically did okay on uh, scale and uh, shape, did a decent job on both of those. So I would, I would probably give myself full points there. Um, on components, I didn't get into probably all of the necessary components. It would have been nice to label this as an arm, that the arm is, is m moving backwards after you twist the rope. So I think I could have done a little bit better, so maybe a one on that. But I really did a good job conveying the, the component of the uh, elastic energy stored in this twisted rope. So maybe one on the components and, and two on the function. Okay, so not full credit on this guy, but, but doing okay. All right, so those were um, three examples, one that we did in class and then two additional ones to get you used to sketching. Um, it is something we're gonna ask you to do routinely in the class, so uh, please um, reflect on how you did on these problems and practice, watch the video as many times as you need to. Um, another great resource for sketching uh, using 
the engineering sketching technique, right? Not perfect artistic renditions, although this guy's pretty good, um, is one of my favorite books in the world. This is called The Way Things Work, and this is a classic book. He's updated it, so there's The New Way Things Work, which has a lot more digital information. But David McCullough, McCulley is um, just a, a fantastic illustrator. Um, so you can see this online. It's also something to ask for for Christmas, maybe from your parents. Um, but it's this beautiful... Um, beautifully illustrated book of all kinds of mechanical systems. So one of my favorites um, is the lock and key. So I, I totally nerded out as a kid and would look at this kind of stuff. Um, but he's really whimsical. So uh, the type of sketching that he's doing is similar to what we're doing, right? So there's there's multiple sketches to convey the same idea, right? So this is basically how does a how does a key work in a lock? It will, lines up these little channels. These channels are each on a spring. Um, he's got these little people in here that help do things. He's actually got elephants all over the place. So there's elephants all in the book. Um, but uh, and then he gets into some you know more details on this is a cylindrical lock. So um, you know he's conveying how the how the the keys line up over here, how the, the notches in the key line up this groove, which then allows you to spin the cylinder in the lock. So if you're ever wondering how to pick a lock, um, actually you can get a lot of information out of this very uh, nicely illustrated uh, two-page guide. Um, so anyway, that book again, folks, is uh, The Way Things Work or The New Way Things Work. Both of them are great um, from David McCulley, and it's a great illustration of of um, uh, engineering sketching, I think, as it's, at its finest. Obviously, he's an illustrator. He's made a lot of money on this book, so he took a little bit more time to do it. But I love his style. I love conveying both form and function together. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Um, good luck with your sketching.